All right, now let's get to the next new topic added to T7, and that's about mitosis and meiosis. So before we get to the important concepts mentioned in T7, I want to go over some of the basics, and this will really help you understand mitosis and meiosis, and uh, how they differ, why they differ. By teaching biology for several years, um, I've noticed that a lot of students get confused by mitosis and meiosis, so I think it's worth um, spending a little bit more time going through, through the basics so that you have a good foundation for more advanced topics. All right, I think most of the questions on T's about mitosis and meiosis will probably be based on human genetics. Um, so uh, I'm just going to use the human number of chromosomes as an example as we go over mitosis and meiosis. All right, so you need to know that humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So that will be a total of 46 chromosomes. All right, that's the unique number of chromosomes for humans. All right, now when you look at this diagram of the human chromosomes, do you notice that all these chromosomes come in pairs, right? That's why a lot of times when we describe the number of chromosomes, we use pairs. We say 23 pairs. And that's why, you know, some uh, one of those uh, famous genetic testing companies calls 23 and me, right? That's why 23 is a very important number. So there are 23 pairs. Okay, now why do we pair them up? So 23 refers to the 23 different types of chromosomes. So you can see we have uh, identified all of them and we have assigned numbers to them. So this is chromosome number one. And we can identify chromosome number one based on the morphology of the chromosome. So number one it can look, it's going to look different than number two or number three or number 22. And it's going to have two copies. One and two. And why do you think there are two copies of chromosome number one? And that's because each one of us has two parents, right? And then we inherit the genetic materials from both of our parents. So that means for each type of chromosome, each parent is going to contribute one. So this chromosome may come from the father, and then this chromosome would come from the mother, right? So for each type of chromosome, you have two copies. One is from the father and one is from the mother. This one, the last one is 23. It's just, you know, the number is not, it's not labeled. So this is 23. Okay. All right, same thing for the other chromosomes. So we know that this is chromosome number 10, right? Based on the, the characteristics of the chromosome, you know, how it looks like. And again, there are two copies, right? One is from the father, one is from the mother. Now, since they are the same type of chromosomes, that means they carry the same genes. Okay? So chromosome number four, the left copy is gonna have a gene, and I'm just gonna make up a name. It's gonna be ridiculous. It's not gonna be correct, but just for simplicity. So we're gonna call it BL gene. Now, the other copy of chromosome number four is also going to have the same gene, right? Because they're the, these two are the same type of chromosome, so they carry the same genes. So the other one is go, also going to have this BL gene. Your trait is determined by these two genes on your chromosomes. So that's why your mother and your father, you know, they're, the combination of, gene of genetic materials will determine what you look like, you know, and all that traits that you have, all the characteristics that you have. I want to mention really quick some terms, diploid and haploid. I don't have a haploid on here, so I'm just going to write it out. Diploid, D-I, that means two. And then haploid, that means one. So for the cell shown here, which has two copies for each chromosome, this cell is going to be diploid because it has two copies of chromosomes for each type, right? 
And for chromosome 21, there are two copies, right? One is from the father, one's from the mother. For chromosome 26, so there are two copies. So that's a diploid cell. Now, what is a haploid cell? If each chromosome only has a one copy, so for example, uh, if we look at chromosome number five, if we take away the copy on the right, that will be haploid. For a cell to be haploid, you're gonna have to take one copy away for all the chromosomes, right? So if all the chromosomes have only just one copy, well, you can imagine, right, if we take a copy away from all the chromosomes, you're just gonna have a 23 chromosomes, right, instead of 46. And then that cell will be considered haploid. Why would we have haploid cells in our body? Why do we want an, any cells to just have half of the number of chromosomes? And the answer is pretty simple. Sex cells, also known as gametes, they have to be haploid, right? Because a sperm cell and an egg will fuse, right, to form, which will become a human embryo. So the sex cells can only have half of the chromosomes, which is 23, right? So that when an egg, if this is an egg and this is a sperm, so sperm also carries 23, so that when they fuse to become a one cell, that cell will have the normal number of human chromosomes, which is 46. So because of that fusion, that fertilization process, each gamete can only have 23 chromosomes. What if they are diploid? What if they have 46 chromosomes? So let's say we have an egg, and this egg is diploid, meaning it has two, 46 chromosomes, right? Two copies for each chromosome. And this sperm also has 46 chromosomes, two copies for each type of chromosome. When you fuse, this new cell is going to have 46 plus 46, you can do the math, which is 92 chromosomes. Now, is that still a human being? No, right? It's a totally different species. Now, if I recall correctly, it might be an aquatic rat. Yes, you heard me. It's a rat species. But double check on that. I could be wrong. Uh, you can just Google which species has 92 chromosomes and see what you find out. Okay? So you can see in order to make sure that your offspring is a human being, the sex, the sex cells or the gametes can only have half of the chromosomes, right? So that means they only have one copy for each chromosome. So these sex cells or gametes are haploid. Okay? So now you see the importance to have haploid cells in our body, right? It ensures that your offspring is a human being. Okay. All right, now only the sex cells or gametes are haploid. All the other cells, which are known as body cells or somatic cells right here, so those cells have to have 46 chromosomes. So for this slide, uh, a few key points, number of chromosomes in humans, and you need to know that for each chromosome, you have two copies, right? Because you have two parents. And make sure you know the difference between diploid and haploid. So diploid um, are cells that are body cells, somatic cells, right? And that's pretty much all the cells except for sex cells or gametes. And then all the gametes, eggs, sperm, those cells are haploid. So they can only have 23 chromosomes. But that's okay because sex cells are gonna fuse, right? During fertilization, so that will bring the number back up to 46. All right, now let's look at mitosis and meiosis. Now there's a one thing I want to mention real quick. So for mitosis, uh, let me jump here and then we can uh, uh, go back to the previous slide. So mitosis is basically a process where a cell replicates itself, right? And it makes two identical daughter cells. Uh, so I have a quick note here. Think of the process as cloning, right? You are making two daughter cells that are identical, genetically identical to the parent cell. So this is the parent cell, and then this is 
Um, these are the two daughter cells, okay? So they are identical to the parent cells. Now, in terms of the number of chromosomes, if the parent cell has 46 chromosomes, then the two daughter cells will each have 46 chromosomes, right? Consider assuming that nothing goes wrong in the process. All right, now that process is known as mitosis. That's a process uh, which we use to produce somatic cells, which basically are body cells. What are body cells again? Pretty much all the cells in your body, right? As long as it's not a sex cell, sperm or egg, then it's a body cell. Liver cells, uh, brain cells, skin cells, those are all somatic cells. And somatic cells do have a 46 chromosomes, right? So they are produced by the process known as the mitosis. Now, I just want to mention meiosis real quick um, so that you can see a pretty nice comparison here. All right, now, do you remember that the gametes can only have 23 chromosomes, right? So gametes are actually produced by germline cells known as spermatogonia or oogonia. Now, don't worry about those terms. Now, those germline cells also have a 46 chromosomes. And then we know that the, the daughter cells can only have 23 chromosomes. So can we use mitosis to make a gametes? Not really, right? Because mitosis is a cloning process. The daughter cells will have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cells. So that wouldn't work to make gametes. So this is where we have to use meiosis to produce daughter cells. Because meiosis allows the daughter cells to have only half of the chromosomes. So if you start with the 46 chromosomes, that's the number in the parent cells, then the daughter cells will have 23. Half of that, right? Half of the 46. Now this diagram is really not accurate because in meiosis, you will generate four daughter cells from one parent cell. Um, but we'll talk about that in more details. So um, take home message, I want you to, re to kind of realize why we have two different types of cell divisions, right? Because they are used to make a different cells. All right, now let's look at uh, mitosis first. Now, we know in mitosis, the cell divides, right? So when a cell divides, everything in the cell is split, right? So how do you maintain the same number of chromosomes? Because you're going to divide everything in half, right? Okay, so we can easily solve that. This is how it works. So before the cell divides, we are going to double the chromosomes. So 46, we're going to make 92. We're going to double that number. And then during the, the division, we divide, right? We split that 92 chromosomes in half. So that's 46. So that's why each daughter cell will have the exact number of chromosomes, which is 46 for human beings. <laughs> All right, now this kind of chromosome doubling process or chromosome duplication happens in the interface. Oops. Okay, interface right here. So you can see this is really kind of precedes the actual cell division, right? You gotta go through interface first and duplicate all your chromosomes before you can go through the actual cell division. All right, now how do chromosomes duplicate in interface? Let me show you real quick. So this is how it works, right? Remember for each chromosome, we have a two copies, right? And then these two copies are known as homologous chromosomes. They are the same type of chromosome. Um, so let's say this is chromosome number five, right? This is a copy from the father, this is a copy from the mother, right? So now we have a two chromosomes. Now in interface, and specifically the S phase in interface. So if you look at interface, there are three stages that the cell has to go through. G1, S, and G2. Now, S phase is the second step of interphase. So second step. Now, in this step, DNA or chromosomes, you can use either word. It really means the same, right? It just really kind of loosely refers to the genetic material. 
So in interface, you can see each chromosome is duplicated, right? So over here, you only have this one chromosome, but at the end of S phase, you have a two chromosomes, although they're linked together, right? There's still one piece, but you have two chromosomes. Now these two identical chromosomes are known as sister chromatids. Oh, I have the term right here, sister chromatids. And they're identical. They're just duplication of each other. All right, same thing for this purple chromosomes, right? Um, so it also duplicates itself. And now you have two identical copies. Okay. Now, some of you may ask me, so are the blue and the purple copies, um, are they identical? No, because if you recall, they come from two different people, right? This one comes from the father, this one comes from the mother. Now, even though they carry the same genes, those genes can be different, right? Because two people, your, are your father and mother identical? No, they're, they're very different, right? So they could very likely contribute to different versions of a particular gene. So the blue and the purple are not identical. But for here, the two blues and two purples, they are identical. All right, now you have two copies, right? Two duplicated chromosomes. Um, now, when the cell divides, you basically just split in the middle, right? And then each daughter cell will have a one half of these chromosomes. So you start with the, with the two, right? One, one blue, one purple, so that's a total of two chromosomes. And you can see once you split these two, each new cell will have a blue, a purple, right? A blue and purple. So these two daughter cells will also have two chromosomes. You can see um, the number remains the same, right? So this is cloning, which is known as mitosis. That's pretty much it. That's what mitosis is about. Now, I don't think that the teeth will go into um, too much depth beyond this. So I think that should be sufficient for tackling the questions on teeth about mitosis.